Let us pray. Holy Father, speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Encourage us. Guide us. Touch us in those deep parts of our souls where only you dwell. Through Jesus our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever been stuck? Not just stuck in a car, in a rut, in the mud, but struck, stuck in life where you didn't know what to do? Where you used to be one way, you had a life, there were certain rules and understandings and ways of living your life, and they all made sense, and then something happens and it upsets your whole apple cart and then you don't know what's in the future you want to know but what worked before doesn't work now and you don't know what to do to get from here to what you're going to be, but you're not there yet. When I graduated from high school, I was sort of there. I had no plan for my life. I had no plan for college. I had no plan for the next week. I had no plans. It's like I woke up one day and said, what am I going to do? I'm no longer in high school. So I got a job in a gas station. That, that, that made my mother proud. I had no future. Still didn't know what I was going to do. I had a friend, his name Paul. Paul was my age, 18 years old, but he graduated a year earlier. And a church, a Baptist church up in Michigan had called him to be their pastor. Yeah, I know. And he said, you want to go with me? I said, might as well. I got nothing going on. So we moved up to Michigan. And when I was there, I got a job working construction. I had worked construction a couple summers. So that was sort of my, my fallback, really. And everything was fine for the first several months until the cold set in. And I began to realize, this isn't okay anymore. I'm stuck. Social scientists would call this where I was, this sort of funk, this in-between times, a liminal space or liminal time. Liminal is a Latin word. Uh, it means threshold is spelled M L I M I N E L not lemon as in lime so it's the beginning it's a threshold it's the entryway to something else it's a transition time it's a season of not knowing of waiting and often a season of discontent it is time of ambiguity and uncertainty, a time when one has left the certainty of your former life, but you, you're not there yet, and you don't know how to get there either. You don't know what the future holds, you just hope it doesn't hold where you are now. In our reading today, that's where the disciples were. In our reading from Acts, there, it's a t we know it, as a 10-day space of time between the ascension when Jesus was raised to heaven at the Father's right hand, 10 days later, the season of the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came down, but they didn't know that Pentecost was going to come the way it did. All, they, knew, they knew two things. They knew that they lost Judas, and they knew that the advocate the comforter 
that Jesus had promised had not yet come. Jesus did not say, wait 10 days and the Holy Spirit's going to come. You know, Jesus doesn't always speak as clearly as sometimes we'd like for him to, be, to speak. And this was the case. So when they were in that 10 day period of time, they did not know that it was going to be last only 10 days. They were just waiting waiting for the future. You know, life is full of these liminal moments, those liminal days, that liminal time that those disciples had where they were waiting. They were comfortable and confident in Jesus who was walking with them they didn't know really that he was going to rise from the dead. They knew that he was with them and then he died and then he rose again and then he left and it's like, well, what do we do now? And Jesus said, wait until the advocate comes. Liminal time. Not sure what to do. So... They were pretty wise and they just waited. I have counseled many, many people who have experienced these liminal times, these liminal moments in their lives. I had a, a wife whose husband of 52 years passed away and she loved him terribly and she would go into his closet and smell his clothes because she couldn't imagine life without him. Who am I anymore? And a man who had been recently laid off after 28 years with the same company and his job was made obsolete and he felt obsolete. What do I do now? Where do I go? I had a recent college graduate. He graduated with a, master, a bachelor's degree in business. We were in an economic downturn and he couldn't find a job in his field and the jobs that he could find he was overqualified for. He said, I'm stuck. What do I do? I once interviewed a woman uh, for my administrative assistant position, and she had a really fine resume. She had a bachelor's degree in teaching, she had her teacher's certificate, she got a master's degree in teaching, but she had only one year of experience as a teacher. And so I quizzed her on that. I said, you know, you've got stellar credentials. You're obviously very, very smart. You prepared for teaching, but you've only taught for one year. Why aren't you teaching? She said, you know, I love to teach. That teaching is my passion but I can't manage a classroom. If you're a teacher, you, you, you understand that. You can teach, but if you can't manage a classroom, you sort of can't teach, at least in a school setting. I've prepared all these years, and now I don't know what to do. I don't know who I am. That year in Michigan for me was a liminal year. It was a time where I began to explore who I am, what do I want to do, what do I want to make with my life. And one day I had an epiphany. I was still working construction. February 2nd, I remember the day because it was Groundhog's Day and the feast of the baptism of our Lord. 
The thermometer read zero degrees, count them zero, and 32 below wind chill factor. It was so cold. I had a mustache. My sinuses would drain and the mucus would freeze in my mustache. How awful is that? And I had an epiphany as surely as the apostles had an epiphany on Pentecost when they received the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I had an epiphany. God said to me, you are a southern boy, and you don't belong here. <laughs> I may be dumb. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> I learned. So I called my brother Marty. He was a student at UT in Austin. I said, Marty, send me an application to UT. I'm coming home. So my, that one time, I've had other times as well, but that one time, took a year, a year of exploring, asking myself who I am and what am I going to do. And it's in that liminal time, that it's really a good time, it's not a bad time, these liminal times, because in these liminal times we're open to new possibilities once we begin really to let the past go. And it's in these liminal times that we begin to explore who we are, who God is, in ways that we may not have known or been aware of before. But sometimes we just have to wait. As those disciples did, open-ended, not knowing it was going to be only ten days. And it's in those liminal times that we grow and where transformation takes place in our souls and we, grant, we can gain a new direction, a new sense of God's future for us, a new sense of God's presence with us regardless of where we are and what's going on. But when you're stuck, it can feel like an eternity. When you're stuck in this linear this liminal space, you can begin to wonder, who am I? And who's God? I thought God said, I know I have the plans for you, plans to bless you and not to curse you. This doesn't feel like a very blessed time. That's often what it's like. Who is God when you don't know who you are? And who did God say he was? Moses had a liminal time. Moses' liminal time lasted 40 years. You think you're stuck? Moses was stuck for 40 years. 40 years in Egypt as Pharaoh's son, living the good life. Had a sense from God that God was going to deliver his people. And Moses decided to deliver them himself. And it was a fiasco. And he killed an Egyptian who was arguing with a Hebrew. And then he was discovered. And he went into the wilderness for 40 years. Not knowing who he was. I thought I was going to deliver God's people. For 40 years, he had not a clue as to what was going on in his life until God appeared to him. And Moses said, well, if you want me to deliver your people, who shall I say sent me? And God said, I am. God gave him a verb. It wasn't even a noun. It can be translated, I am. I am who I am. I will be with you. I will be with you as I will be with you. Really, God gave Moses himself.
and he realized and he learned because of his encounter with God that God will be with him. Because Moses need, needed to learn that lesson if he was going to lead the Israelites out of Egypt to the promised land, he needed to know and they needed to know that God would be with him and them whether they were in Egypt, whether they were in the wilderness, or whether they were in the promised land. It did not matter geographically where they were. What mattered was relationally that they knew that God was with them. And so they were formed in this in-between time so that they could carry well the conquering of the promised land for their future. In verse 6 of our gospel reading before what is given us today, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. In verse 11, he prays, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me. Your name. That's what God gave Moses. Who shall I say sent me? And God said, I am with you. God gave him him, himself. Yahweh is my name. You'll know me by my name because you know who I am. I am with you. And Jesus said in his prayer to his father, I don't belong to this world. And these followers of mine, they don't belong to this world either. That's part of the problem that we have because in some respects all of our life once we come to faith in Christ all of our life is a liminal life. Because we're all each one of us strangers in a strange land called earth. We, we sort of belong but not fully. And so we come together, we gather here, here in this place, here in this place, week after week after week. And what we do is what Christians do in liminal times. Our worship service is aimed to be a liminal time where we get quiet, where we get still where we hear the still, small voice of God in not a whisper, but a whiss, which is half a whisper. Because God whispers to us in that still, small voice, I am with you. Your life may be shambles. Your life may not have worked out the way you want. But I am with you. That is my name. And I claim you. I have called you by name. You are mine. As we worship together, we come together not to get some sort of general, general sentiment of well-being, of way to go, and we're plugging for you. No, what we receive in this place is the very life of Jesus. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We get, it's a package deal. We get Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who together is with us. This space we are fed for our journey. We are fed on the Word of God. And we are fed on the sacrament of God. 
We are nourished with the scriptures, and when we come together, we say things, we hear things we don't hear out in the world, and we receive things we don't receive out in the world. We receive bread that is more than bread, wine that is more than wine. We receive Jesus himself. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's who we receive for our journey. I am with you. Jesus said he revealed the Father's name to them and it was the name that would hold them fast and secure. Not the comforts, not the success in life, but God's holy name. I am with you. So come, come to this place, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Be a part of this community. Come with your pain from past disappointments and your doubts about the future, but come and be still and listen. Sing songs about God's life and His life among us, whether you can sing like Pavarotti or Jimmy Durante. Come and sing songs you won't hear out in the world because the world is in our home. Feed on the Word. Feed on the sacrament. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. As you wait to hear God's next step in your life. And you know what may happen is you might in this place encounter someone else who's been where you are. And there they've moved on a little bit and they can share with you their experience as well. Ultimately, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. But you know When you come here, you might also find someone that you can journey with. And that's just icing on the cake.